Hope everybody's doing well. Glad you're here. And our first song of the morning is 10,000 Reasons. If you can stand, stand. If you need to sit, sit. Stand and join us as we sing.
Father, as we're gathered in this place this morning, thank you for letting us come directly to you. We don't have to go through anybody else. We can just come right to you, and and you hear us. You will take our petitions, and Lord, uh, you tell us that we're together, that you show up up this morning, Lord, you show out. You open our minds, you open our hearts, and Lord, we'd be just receptive to the message from your word today, and Lord, as we sing songs and sing praises to you, Lord, may it be a sweet, sweet aroma to you. And Lord, we just thank you for every person here, and Lord, we pray for those that are not here. Lord, you'd continue to guide and direct us, Lord, in all that we do and say, that somehow, some way, somebody may hear the gospel. And, Lord, they'll find Jesus, your precious Son. Again, we thank you for all things. In Jesus' name, amen. You may be seated for just a moment to have a special announcement. Microphone's there. Don't forget the mic. Is it on? It is. Okay. Um, you, if you look in your bulletin, you'll see that there's an announcement we're going to host a Galentine luncheon, and no, it's not a misspelling. So this is for gals. So, man, you will not be there. But um, there's a sign-up sheet for this luncheon, and it's out right when you go through the doors um, on the table. So if you are a lady and you would like to come to that, all you have to do is bring yourself. You don't have to bring any food or anything like that. That'll be provided, but I'm just trying to get an accurate count. So we'd like to have an accurate count by next um, Sunday. But it's going to be on February 4th, and that is a Saturday from noon to 2 here at the church. Um, and there are going to be games and crafts, and it's just a time to celebrate um, you women. And if you know women in the community that are unchurched and you want to invite them, that's certainly okay. Several people have asked that, and, and that's fine. So we hope to see you there. It's going to be just a time of fellowship and uh, a time to eat, obviously. So thank you. And since it is a glorious day, and that is our next song, won't you stand and sing with us or sit if you must, and what a glorious day it is. as could be Jesus came forth to be born of a virgin dwelt among men my example is he the word became flesh and the light shined among us his glory revealed living he loved me dying he saved One 
After Russia invaded Ukraine in the spring of 2022, a woman named Olga, along with her family, fled and were welcomed at the bordering country of Moldova by Christians from a Baptist church there. The church welcomed this family and other refugees with open arms, providing for both physical and spiritual needs. Missionaries David and Shannon Brown partnered with this church and the Moldav Moldovan Baptist Union in ministering to Ukrainian refugees by recruiting volunteer medical teams to meet the needs of refugees housed throughout Moldova. Olga called her husband to tell him how well the Baptists cared for them. She was astonished by his response as he had pre previously forbidden his family from going to church. Praise the Lord, that's God's grace. God is good and protected you, he said. And the cooperative program that we contribute to takes the gospel to the nations and neighborhoods. Our financial support through these endeavors in allowing gospel work to impact the displaced and disheartened all over the world Lord, we thank you for the Browns and those in Moldova that are ministering to the Ukrainian refugees and for God's healing among those affected by the conflict between Russia and Ukraine, Lord. And help each of us to remember that we are not called to win people, we're called to plant a seed, Lord. So help each of us to have our eyes open in our community to those that need to hear about you. For it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen.
Father, again, what a joy it is that we can give back to you a portion of what you've blessed us with. Lord, again, uh, you know what's in here. You know the hearts of those who give. And Lord, we just pray that we would be uh, good stewards of that, that we would use it to further your kingdom, not only here in Pierre, but literally around the world. And Lord, did you just guide and direct us in all things. For we give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning. Good morning. Got a question for you. Do you know what makes you special? Yourself? Okay. God. Okay. You want to, you, you want to know why each and every one of us is special in our own unique way? Because God created us. Go to the first slide, please. In Genesis 127, God said, So God created man in his own image. In the image of God created he him, male and female created he them. That's a fancy way of saying God made us. From the number of hairs on our head to our toenails. Everything, every detail about us was God's inspired. Yes. As soon as I understand that, I'll, I'll find fault with it. <laughs> yes. Good. Second slide, real quick. You know, you know, God, you know, God loves all of us, right? He says, "Look at the birds of the air." This is Matthew six twenty six. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much more valuable than they? In Matthew, they ask, they ask the question, are you, are, you know, God takes care of all the animals, all the birds, every, everybody, everything. Why wouldn't, he, why wouldn't he take care of his favorite creation? Go to the third slide, please. This is another thing. Uh, whether you're rich or poor, doesn't matter. God made everyone. That's Proverbs 22, 2. So everything we do, we have to realize that we are special not only because of who we are, but who our Father, our Father in heaven is. God created us from before we were born. He knew us. And that's amazing to me. Go ahead, last slide, please. It says, we are God's workmanship, created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. That's Ephesians 2.10. Everything I've said, everything the Bible says this morning says that we are special. We are designed for a purpose, and our purpose is God's will, and we need to figure out what God's will is for us. And that's one very important thing. We have to make sure, remember that no matter what's going on, no matter what happens in our lives, we are a creation of God, and that makes us very special indeed. You understand? Yeah? Yes. Yes, thank you. Okay. I'm, I'm, not, just, I'm not just, you know, blowing smoke. That's good. Dear Lord, once again, we thank you for these wonderful children, Lord. We ask, Lord, that you would be with them as they go out their lives. We ask, Lord, that you would give them the ability to apply your word to their lives as well. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. And I believe Miss Mary has something for you. Not enough for everybody? I think next Sunday I'm going to sit up there and listen to what Mark has to say so I can get some candy too. If you have your Bibles with you this morning, I encourage you to turn to 2 Peter chapter 1. I'll be reading verses 2 through 12. But before I get there, uh, anybody here have nicknames? Well, I, I was given one Friday, uh, so I'm going to go ahead and tell you, so in case you don't hear it from somebody else, you hear it from me. Um, 
you know, we do this thing at the school every Friday where we uh, either let kids shop for some food or there's a grab-and-go bag where they can pick up food. And So there was one kid especially, oh, it's been months ago, couldn't find what he was looking for, and somebody told me what that was, and so I went and got it. So Friday, I'm not there every Friday, but Friday I was there, so Joseph is the little boy, uh, or not little boy, but boy, who, uh, and they call me the noodle man. So if you want to call me the noodle man, <laughs> you can do that. Uh, I won't like it, but you can do it. So uh, anyway, and the other funny thing that you need to hear is when Marjorie told me about this galantine, it took me three days to figure out what galantine was. But when I was typing it into the computer, I go, ah, okay. So anyway, fun stuff out of the way. Uh, if you have your Bibles with you this morning, uh, here's what God's Word tells us this morning. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord, as His divine power has given to us all things that pertain to life, Godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by glory and virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great and precious promises, that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue, to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control, perseverance, to perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For if these things are yours and abound, you will neither be barren or nor fruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. For he who lacks these things is short-sighted even to blindness and has forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins." Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so in an entrance will be supplied to you abundantly and to the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. For this reason, I will not be negligent to remind you always of these things that you know and are established in the present truth. Wow. That is a pretty powerful passage of Scripture this morning. And it really spoke to me because I, you know, I told you this before. When I begin to pre prepare a sermon, I have to go through what it is that affects me. And then somehow I get to share some of those things with you. And I got to thinking about all the things that are going on in the world today. If we could just take this one passage... <laughs> I mean, the Bible is complete. There's nothing missing out of it. But yet sometimes there's just a passage that really sticks out. And I began to think about that. And the first thing that popped out to me in verse 2 was grace. Do you really know what grace is? Uh, grace usually comes in the form of something you don't deserve, but you get it. And I thought about that, and I think that sometimes I get the other, is I get stuff that I do, and I don't get the grace that I should get from people, not from God. I get grace from God uh, every day. I, I, you've heard me say this before. He loves me in spite of me. In fact, I just heard a song here oh, in the last month, and uh, some of you may know it. It's by a group called Cain. I don't know if you listen to Cain or listen... But it basically it says that, uh, let's see if I can get this right. On my best day, I'm a child of God. On my worst day, I'm a child of God. See, that means he loves us with grace. No matter what we do today, tomorrow, next week, if we are followers of Jesus Christ, we have that grace. And think about this. This is one that really probably hit me. Uh, more than any other, and all of them hit me pretty good. But just think about this. Any of you without sin? I don't see any hands. 
Well, it says that grace is the fact that Christ died in your place. Now think about the significance of that. That something you did, will do, have done, Christ hung on the cross just for that. That's pretty powerful to me that Somebody loved me enough that he was willing to give his life to take my place for the things I've done. Not something he did. Peter? By the way, this is not Peter quoting this. This is a different Peter. So just, just in case you don't get confused of who, who wrote this. So, uh, but the fact that Christ died in my place. It means you don't get what you really deserve. Isn't that pretty cool that that he did something for us that we're not really worthy of? But that's how much he loves us. But it goes on to say that it's multiplied to you by the knowledge of God and Jesus. If we want knowledge, guess what we have to do? Come here on Sunday mornings or Wednesday nights. You might gain some. But right here, and you've heard me say this pretty much till you're probably sick of hearing me saying this, it's right here. Everything we'll ever need to be all that he's called us to be is right here. But knowledge comes from learning, right? Comes from studying, right? Comes from opening the books, I, I had to go through a little thing in my own head that, that uh, it's been a day or two since I've attended school, but I remember that if I did not open the book, if I did not try to comprehend what was in the lesson for that week and when they gave a test, if I hadn't done the work, I didn't know the material, I couldn't answer the questions. And that's what God's calling us today. To get the knowledge, we've got to open the book. Not only open the book, but we've got to pray, spend time on our knees, not necessarily literally, but figuratively, we've got to open our hearts and ask God to reveal to us His truths so that we can share them with somebody else. Isn't that our goal? Is as we know, we share that with other people. So we have to seek Him. We have to spend time not only, and, and I did that this morning, it's, and that's not something I, I want to admit, but I'm going to admit it anyway. Most times when I come before God in prayer, I tell him everything that I want him to know. I do. But rarely, rarely do I say, God, let me hear what you have to say. See, that's when the real knowledge begins is not only when we tell God, because the Bible says He already knows, right? We believe that. He already knows everything we'll ever need. It's then spending that time that listening to that still, small voice where He's speaking back to me and telling me, Buck, here is my plan for you today. I know you've probably seen this on a, on a card somewhere, but it says every morning when we wake up, All the plans that we've planned, God says, I don't need to know your plans because I have the plan. You ever think about that? That God, every single day of your life, he knows from the time you, before you were in your mother's womb to the time you're going to spend eternity with him, he knows the plans and thoughts he has for you. Second point this morning is power. Verse 3 states that because of his divine power, power that we can have all things pertaining to life through what knowledge and i began to realize there was a theme here about knowledge and again i can probably repeat myself a hundred times and some days i get it some days i don't but it's going back and getting in his word and understanding and i shared that earlier this morning and i'll share it with you if there's any time well the first thing i want to say if you don't have a copy of god's word that you can actually read, (laughs) see me. I will promise you, as soon as I can find one for you, I will get you a copy of God's Word. 
whether it's for the youngsters, whether it's for older people, it's for somewhere in between. If you need a copy of God's Word, that is one of the greatest gifts I could give anybody except for telling them about the Savior, Jesus Christ, is to give you your own copy of God's Word. Do you realize how many people in America don't have a copy? Do you know how many people in the world literally don't have a copy of God's Word? So how do you want to have the knowledge? you got to have the book. If you don't have a book, you can't open it to read. I do know we have technology today. I mean, I know that you can go put an app on your phone, and I think if there's somewhere around 228 versions of the Bible on your phone. But I'm still old school enough that this is where I read. Unless I'm on a plane somewhere, and I have been known to be on a plane. Power through knowledge, through him who created us, who called us, who did something for us that we could not do for ourselves. Third point this morning is promises. God promises that he will give us exceedingly great promises so that we may be partakers of his divine nature, so we can escape the corruption that's in this world. You believe there's corruption in our world? I'm not talking about politics. I'm not talking about all the stuff you've read lately about this and that. I'm talking about just the immoral, <laughs> ungodly behavior. And just so you know, this didn't start this week, this year, from the very first moment that we read about man and woman, corruption began. And it's going to continue till, till we <laughs> understand that we need to have the knowledge the promise that God gives us that we can be partakers of his divine nature. See, I believe this with all my heart. Everyone that's in this room, God's called you to do something for him. It's probably not being a pastor or preacher, but it may be having an event. It may be taking up the offering. It may be handing out some of that. And I hadn't had breakfast this morning, so I keep looking at that. Going, Maybe I need something. But, uh, but he's called us to do something. Do you think it's easy for anybody who stands up here to speak or sing? Not really. I mean, you think about when you stand up for somebody and you begin to use your voice to communicate different things there's an impact and, and with that impact becomes the idea of what's that look like am I communicating clearly am I singing well not me uh, somebody singing in fact I asked Laney this morning was she going to sing and she said she I said she can sing anytime she wants to not me but he's promised us that he will allow us to be partakers of his divine nature so we can ex escape the corruption that's in this world. But where does it start? It starts with knowledge. Knowledge starts by studying. Knowledge starts by participating. Knowledge starts by asking and doing and learning and continue to learn. I consider myself a lifelong learner till Jesus calls me home. Till he said, Buck, your time here is done. It's time to come home. And I began to think about that. And, and you know, the Bible is pretty clear on a lot of things. It tells us that we're literally aliens in this world, that this is not our home. You may have a place where you lay your head. You may have a place where you park your car. You may have all that... The Bible says that our home is not here. And until we go home, we need to continue to learn. 
We need to continue to grow in our relationship with the Father. I can tell you this. I know this with 100%. He loves me more than I can ever imagine. But I'm not sure I love him as much as I can. That's an everyday process. To learn to love him more. He couldn't love me any less because what did he do for me? He literally gave his son to pay the price for me. Man, what what a love. I, I wouldn't give one of my children for you. I wouldn't even give some of my grandkids. Maybe maybe one. No. No. But you understand that kind of sacrifice is to give your own flesh and blood to somebody so somebody else could live. Wow. I think about that every day. He knows me. <laughs> he still loves me. It's just amazing some days. And, and, but he's promised that we can have and be partakers of his divine nature. If you remember the scripture, uh, and so it goes to the fourth point here this morning, is reason. It says, for this very reason, here's what we need to do. In verses 5 through 8, it states, giving all starting with faith. How many of you met Jesus face to face? Physically met Jesus face to face? Some may think I've lived long enough that I may have done that, but I, I, I didn't. But it says it starts out with faith. It's believing in something you can't see. But you have faith enough to believe it's true. You understand that? Faith is meaning believing in something you can't see and maybe don't even understand, but, you, but somewhere deep inside of you know it's true. That God it, it did create you. That God sent his son. God did all these things for us. And so it starts with faith. And then it says to virtue in the definition of a high moral standing, setting us apart. You've heard me say this from, from standing here before. If nobody sees me different out there than they do in here, then what have I accomplished? Well, actually, I have accomplished something. It is a bad testimony. Because if they know that I am a follower of Christ and I live way different out there than I do here. So it's saying I need to live to a high moral standing and then to knowledge, then to self-control, then to perseverance. And, and that's one of those words that most people don't want to hear when they're in church is, is perseverance. Is persevere to what? Uh, anybody here ever had, had an ache or pain? Uh, I wake up and find new ones every day. Anybody here ever had financial issues? Anybody here ever been sick? Anybody here ever lost a loved one? Anybody had, and we could just keep on going with the list of things that, but the Bible says that we need to persevere in spite of what's going on. And that leads to steadfastness. I mean, basically the perseverance is that steadfastness in doing something difficult in the midst of all this going on, that you persevere through all this going on, and which leads to godliness. Isn't that our goal? It is to be like Christ at some point, have the mind of Christ, try the best to live like Christ, to proclaim Christ. And then from godliness, it says to brotherly kindness, and then to love. Scriptures say these things that are ours and they will abound. It also says that we will not be unfruitful in our knowledge if we strive to live that life and to live like Jesus. I begin to think about that. I begin to think about the city that I live in. I begin to think about you. Why are we here? We're here because uh, I'm a great preacher? Uh, no. Am I here because it's a great building? It's a great building, but that's not why we're here. Is it because we have chairs instead of pews? 
It's cool that we do have that because if you've ever sat on a pew for many years, they're not nearly as comfortable as chairs. Why are we here? Just think about this. If we took that number four reason and we began to think about our faith and living a high moral standard and then learning and then having self-control and then to persevere and then lead to some form of godliness and then to brotherly love, to love. What would change in the world today if we just lived in a state of love? Think it'd change people? No matter what we do, no matter what we're going through, as we exhibited love all around, and I began to think about the word love and uh, I shared with the church this morning that in my 45 years plus of marriage, I, I probably told Pam, probably couldn't even count how many times, I said, I love you. But if you look in the Bible, love's there, but is my love for Pam the same as my love for T-bone steak? Same word, right? Some of you like that, uh, what's that word, that, that, that food, uh, Pizza. And by the way, that's not manna. Some, some people told me that's really what happened in the desert with the Israelites, that the manna was a thing called pizza. Uh, no. Ice cream, candy, relationships. There's really only one love. And that's God's love. And if we begin to, to take on that image as we've been talking about this morning, and begin to just love people where they are, how they are, in spite of who they are, right? Because isn't that what God does for us? He loves us in spite of us. And yet sometimes we don't hold that same value with other people. We love them based on what they do, <laughs> where they are, some even their financial contributions or not. The Bible says that if we do all these things and lead up those steps to love, it'll literally change the world. I mean, literally change the world. Starting where? <laughs> oh, let's start over in... Uh, uh, St. Louis. Or let's start in Sioux Falls. You know, that's one of our larger cities. Let, let's start over there with love. No, right here. Right here with me. Right here with you. And then Peter says in verse 12, for this reason we should never be negligent to remind us of these things because they are truth truth. I don't know what world you live in, but I can go on any news uh, paper, news show, news on my phone, and it's somebody's interpretation of truth. This is not an interpretation of the truth. It is the truth. It is everything we'll ever need. There's not one thing in here. I mean, you come up with a a subject or a topic, I promise you somewhere in here, I may not know where it is, but we can find it, that every truth we'll ever need to know is right here. Now, there are a lot of books out there. I've got a shelf full of them. And they're good to have, and they sometimes explain a little bit deeper than what I could explain. But if you don't have this as your foundation, all those books are worthless. I promise you they are. So here's the question this morning. Do we, as a church, want to reach our city? Just so you know, this is one of the things that pops in my head from time to time. Uh, there are two people or two groups of people watching outside the United States on Sundays. There's one group from England 
that watch. That's pretty much every Sunday. And there's one group from Africa, which I have no earthly idea why they would want to watch. But they do. But they notice what goes on. They notice not only last Sunday, but they'll notice this Sunday, there's quite a few kids here. It's just pretty cool, right? Because without kids, what's going to happen to this church? It won't exist. We need to be nurturing, praying for, loving on those kids in such a way that maybe they've never understood. So what's going to be different about us from this day forward? What's going to be different about me from this day forward? I want to know more. I want to love more. I want to do more. Just because of my age, I'm not done. <laughs> it's sort of interesting. I thought at some point in, in my life that I would slow down, take it easy. And God had just the opposite plan. <laughs> he still needs us. But he doesn't really need us, but he wants us to be on fire for him, sharing his son Jesus with the rest of the world, with the people we know. So here's something I'm going to tell you. Last year I did this, and she doesn't know I'm going to say it, but I'm going to say it anyway. Lou is my social secretary. I have one in Blunt now, just so you know, and Lou here. If you know somebody that needs a visit, Get a hold of Lou. She'll set it up. But here's the kicker. You set it up, you have to go. Okay? If you want me to visit somebody, you got to go. I'll visit anybody, anytime, anywhere, and talk about whatever we need to talk about. But we need to reach out to our community. Because, again, statistics tell me that today, at least 60% of the population up here is not in any church. Any denomination, any church building, they're not there. I would say it's more than that, but that's a good standard number to think that six out of ten people are not in any church on Sunday. So what's going to be different about us that people want to come and hear the truth? I don't know what your need is this morning. Maybe you're, you've got it all. You don't need any help. You don't need any prayers. You got everything you'll ever need. If you can answer that question, yes, then please see me after church because you have another problem. <laughs> but whatever you need this morning, God is more than able, more than ready to meet you where you are. If you don't know him as your Lord and Savior, I'll be glad to show you in God's word here. There's other people in this room will be glad to show you as well. Maybe you just want to come and have a little prayer or, or maybe you got somebody you want to pray for or a situation. doesn't matter. You can do that where you're sitting. You can come to the altar. You can come talk to me. I, I don't know what your needs are, but God does, and you do. So if you will stand with me and whatever your need is, we're going to sing, Draw Me Close.
Before we pray, I have some friends here this morning from the Bill Forche, or better known as Bill Foose. Uh, Andy and his wife are here. He's pastors in Bell. I've known them for probably longer than I want to admit how long I've known them. But just make sure you welcome them and anybody else that you haven't seen in a while, welcome them and, and tell them hello or whatever. And if you want a piece of candy before you leave, <laughs> come and get you a piece of candy. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for loving us. Thank you for caring for us. Thank you for doing stuff that we couldn't do for ourselves. Lord, you are great and mighty and awesome and holy. And Lord, I pray that we begin today to start living like you and that we out in this community, Lord, would be willing to tell others about your son and that their lives would be changed forever. Lord, guide and direct in all the things we do and say. We'll just give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen.